So here are the contents of the V9H hardware kit. Move this out of the way. We got a nice little quick installation guide and the guide has nice pictures and good pictorials and shows us where everything should be hooked up to. We also get four little fuse tabs and the reason we get four is because there are different fuse sizes that we might encounter. The car may potentially have the larger fuses, which are called the ATO fuses, or maybe the car uses the mini fuse, which is a little smaller. In my case, on newer cars, it uses this, which is the micro fuse size. And then finally, there's this oddball size, which is called the low profile mini fuse. So it's nice that they included all four of them. That way I have the ability to choose the size that matches my car. Now here's the power adapter. Uh, it's neat because it's, it has, uh, Bantel claims it has low voltage protection, which means that if at some point the battery gets too low, this will disconnect power. So the dash cam will not drain the battery all the way down where you will become stranded, which is a pretty good feature. Also, there's about 12 feet of length in this cable, which should be enough to route this cable through all the A pillars and the roof liner until this connects to the dash cam. This has a mini USB plug, which is uh, the right size for band top dash cams. On the other side, we have the three wires that are gonna be connected to the fuse box. I like that they have a nice terminal on the ground wire because then I can just slide it and install a nut and secure it to the body of the car. The yellow one has a quick disconnect terminal. So this allows me to pick the right size. Let's imagine that mine is this size. All I have to do is grab that and slide that into here, lock it in place, and that is it. Now I am ready to go install this. Now, I like that they also provided an extra fuse because the original fuse is going to be installed here, but this fuse is going to be for the dash cam. So it's going to look like that. It's going to have the original and the new fuse that's provided. So that's pretty cool. Now, what about the things that I did not like or did not understand? Well, is this red one right here. The red cable ACC should go to a power source that is only power when the car is turned on. So I expected this wire to have a terminal like this, a quick disconnect one, so I can pick a fuse tap and use it. But instead it has a molded uh, fuse and it happens to be this size right here, which is a mini fuse. Now this is a common fuse, but may not necessarily be the fuse of my car. So in my case, my car uses this ones. So I cannot use this end. I have to cut it off and install manually one of these things. Now, fortunately, it's not that hard to do so. Here is a quick fix for that. These fuse tabs have a crimp connection. So all I gotta do, if this is not the right size, I'm gonna cut it off, strip the wire, and install this over here. And I'll demonstrate how that looks. I'm gonna be attaching this wire to this splice. And before I do that, I wanna show you what's inside of this splice. This blue thing right here is called a splice. What's inside of there, it's this little metal cylinder. Now this metal cylinder is roughly in the middle of this blue portion right here, which means that this wire has already occupied, the red wire is already occupying half of that cylinder. So I'm gonna be working with the other half of the cylinder right here. So I'm gonna take this wire, I'm gonna remove the insulation. So I'm only gonna have copper. And then I'm gonna insert the wire and I'm gonna insert it this far. Notice that I'm only inserting it halfway because the other side is already used. Then I'm gonna crimp it with this tool right here and I'm gonna place the tool in here. So it's gonna be right in the middle of that little space that I'm working in. This is the space I'm working in, this is the middle. If I place it too far out, if I try to crimp here, I'm only gonna crimp plastic. If I place it here, I might just get the very edge of the cylinder. So I wanna place it right here, okay? Now, how do I remove the insulation from this wire? I could use this tool right here, this section right here can remove the wire. Another way that people do it is with a knife. I could literally take this knife and go around it but that's usually a little bit dangerous and I have seen people cut their fingers with it. So I'm gonna use this tool right here and I'm gonna show you on the bottom part, it has many different sizes. So I'm gonna select a size that's close to this, but a little bit smaller because I want it to grip the insulation and cut the insulation off. 
So for this case, it looks like an 18 might be just right. Yeah, it looks like I'm just right. Okay, I'm gonna grab this, place this in the location of the 18, close the tool. And it's always better to start with a larger hole than the smaller one. If I start with the small one, I might go too far and cut it off. Uh, if I go with this size and I find that it does not remove the insulation, I can always move down, but at least I haven't cut any wires. So I'm closing this and I'm pulling on the other side. Oh yeah, look how clean that came out. Okay, so now you'll notice that the wire has now the strands, the little, all the little wires are kind of everywhere. I don't want to twist it, but I could do just a little bit to restore the way that the wire is kind of made, okay? Now, this is all, you also notice that I cut it longer than how much I need. The reason for it is this wire is very small, so it's gonna go into a cylinder that's pretty big. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more to grab onto, and I'm gonna do that very simply by folding it in half. And this is a common practice. It uh, basically builds up the size of the wire. So when I insert it into the cylinder, there's gonna be more grab on for that cylinder to grab onto. So, okay, so now I'm ready to do the actual splice. I'm gonna insert the wire. And I can actually feel it bottoming out. So I know the wire has been inserted all the way because it no longer goes anymore. Now I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna crimp it. On the opposite side, on the tip of the tool, there are three colors. The colors will match this color right here. So I'm gonna do it with the center one because the center one has blue. If my splice was red, I would do it with the top one. If it was yellow, I would do it with the bottom one. So I have blue, I'm gonna squish it with the center spot. Okay, I'm gonna locate my spot here. Okay, that feels about right. And making sure that I'm holding the wire in, I'm gonna press down. And I wanna do this in one shot. Okay, but what I mean by that is that I want to get this clamp right the first time. If I pull it off and then I'm like, oh, I didn't like it, I want to redo it again, it all it doesn't really come out as good. So I only want I want to make sure I get it right the first time. Now, if for some reason I didn't push it all the way down, I could technically do it again on the same spot on as long as it's on the same spot. And notice how the flat, see how it's flat this way? I'm inserting the tool this way. I wouldn't want to open it up again and re-squish it. I wanna make sure that I'm gonna just apply more pressure on the same place that I already applied pressure. But it usually, um, it is not recommended to do this. It's usually only recommended to do it once and that's it. Okay, now once I have fully bottomed out, I can open up the tool and that's it. The splice is ready. Now it's always a good practice. I like to tug on it just gently confirm that it is secured under and the wire is not going to come out. Okay, this splice is ready for ins uh, installation. So that's how it looks when you attach a uh, fuse tap to a wire that's bare. Now I would have liked it if they both of, both of them were the quick disconnect type. I don't know why they did it like that, but I'm guessing they probably went with the fuse as the most common. But either way, this is a pretty cool kit. It works perfectly with the bantop cameras. I particularly like to use this with my mirror dash cam. And it's also fairly inexpensive. Now, another nice thing about this uh, toolkit is that it comes with this little installation tool for routing the wire into the trim. These tools, uh, they just save a lot of time, and a lot of headache by allowing me to insert the wire into tight pla uh, places. So that's pretty cool. If you guys are interested in getting this kit, I'll place a link, a link on the description below and I'll also put a little link if you guys need to buy more of few steps with the crimp style connector all right so that's it for this product review hopefully you guys found it helpful if you did uh, please hit thumbs up consider subscribing for more product reviews and if you have any questions or comments about this kit please feel free to comment down below and as always thank you for watching